a look at the schedule for today. Oh. Um, what we're going to have a little think about today, um, this morning, is uh, what makes a good edit. And also, what is post-production? What is editing? Um, then I'll, I'll, I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> and we're going to talk about um, steps to success in post-production. Before we even start doing any training or wee video, we're going to have a think about what it is it you have to do before you start editing, and how, how can you um, keep a handle on everything you have to do in post-production. Um, then we are going to, then Matt's going to take over and he's going to talk about, about Wii Video and take you through that and that's basically, you know, how to turn it on and how to bring footage in and, and all the things you need to know to use Wii Video. And he's, it's pretty thorough because it's quite a simple program so we, we cover quite a lot of things. Um, then we'll have a coffee break in the room upstairs again. Um, and we'll come back and I'm going to talk to you a bit about um, using found materials. And I did mention it yesterday, um, how to find things that you can use online. You don't have to be online, but we're going to be online looking for things like photos and um, footage that is actually free to use. Um, then it's lunch and we've got an hour for lunch um, today. It's a little bit more relaxed than yesterday. And um, so if you can just be sure to come back and meet us here, down here in this room at, at 1.30. I might have to reschedule if we go over, but we'll try not to. It's very confusing when we do. Um, and Russ, clever Russ, is going to show us a little edit of um, the, the things that we filmed in the morning yesterday, just to show you how things come together, how everything comes together. It won't all fit together perfectly, but that's part of the learning. And so I hope that you'll realise when you start editing that, you know, if, nothing does, if things don't fit together, that's part of the learning. You're learning from the things that you've done, and next time you won't do the same thing, maybe. We'll see. We'll see what works, see what doesn't. And then in the afternoon, after Russ has shown his edit, we will be editing, um, you will be editing your own videos, and we'll be here to help you with anything you need help with. So I'll be in this room, working away, and doing your own thing. If you can get your own headphones uh, and you want to, then do that at lunchtime. If not, we've got headphones for you because you want to listen to the audio. And then at four o'clock or whenever we've exported our videos, we'll gonna, we're going to watch them. And that's the fun part. <laughs> it's all fun. It's all fun. Um, and hopefully, well, we will definitely be wrapped up by five o'clock or before. Um, if you have any questions, it's very, you know, it's informal. You know us now. Um, just. Put, you know, say, wait a minute, Lizzie, what are you talking about? Well, wait a minute, Matt. <laughs> Hello, Manon. Just pick a computer. And yeah, so let's let's have a let's um, get going. Oh, Matt, Matt. Yeah. Right, we've got um, we've got John and yeah. Carol and Genevieve, mm -hmm. who apparently haven't registered on Hadan on WeVideo. Video. Okay. So well, could you help? Help? Them. Could you help them quietly while I go yeah. through? Okay, so you don't need to you don't need to sign in yet because um, we're going to watch a video. But before we do that, um, what is editing? What do you guys think? What is editing? Hands up, it goes. <laughs> Putting your footage together to make it. Tell the story you want to tell. Yeah. It's getting all the stuff that you filmed out of order in various places. Come on in. Okay. Pick a computer somewhere. It's, it's actually squashed, isn't it? Um, do you bet, do you, um, yes, what, what, um, what, what, what else is, is um, editing pop and putting it together? I mean, cutting. Hmm? Cutting. Yeah, you're cutting, out, you're cutting out the bits that you don't want, which. You know, sometimes you've got 50 hours of footage, so you have to find some kind of magical way to turn that into half an hour or, you know, if you're really unlucky, five minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's cutting, cutting out the, the bad bits, putting in, putting in the good bits, one hopes. Um, it's, there's so many things involved with editing, and we're going to um, have a look, actually. Let's just watch a video. I want you to watch this video and tell me what you think about the editing. Okay. Um.
to watch any more? No. <laughs> no, me neither. Any comments on that video in terms of its editing? And not, you can comment on everything else because everything's the edit in the end, isn't it? The music seemed too fast. How fast the trains were going? Yes. In other words, the trains were going way too slow, don't you think? The music was completely inappropriate. It was weird. Some kind of it was Chinese punk, wasn't it? Um, and the trains were going way too slow. It was like, wait a minute, come on, what's happening? I just don't understand. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yes. What else about the edit? Crossing directions. It was crossing directions. You had no. It's like, okay, the train's going that way. It must be going somewhere. No, it's not. It's coming the other way. I have no idea what's happening now. It's like there's absolutely nothing happening because the direction is messed up. So Matt talked to you yesterday about crossing the line, 180 degree rule. That's what happens. You have you get confused. You don't know what where things are going. Um, so inappropriate music, crossing a line, and text. text. Yeah, the train runs um, for the from long run station. So you give some information for audience. Yes. Um, it was, it's an educational, a piece of educational media, this, and so they're trying to get the students to think about those trains and, and do, a, do a, a question. But um, not it all. Sorry? But not all videos uh, with the education purpose, so they don't put some, some videos just to, I think some videos with the text, some videos with the, audio or yeah. explaining. It's fine to use text on screen. It's absolutely fine to use text on screen. Um, and well, we'll that text wasn't easy to read though because the contrast yeah. between yeah. the background sure. and then we're also a letterbox as well. Yeah. Some of the text went down in the letterbox so you, it's quite hard on your eye to yeah. the contrast. It was, a, the it was also aesthetically yeah. unpleasing yeah. that they didn't put it in the right place and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so if you're going to use text, if, you, if you're going to use text, use it in an aesthetically pleasing way, at least, and a way that's easy to read. It's very important. I'm just going to show you another one, and we'll talk about what's bad about their, this edit as well. Are you recording? North Carolina was one of the original 13 colonies established by the British. In the 1700s, the colony continued growing as settlers immigrated from the colonies of Pennsylvania and Virginia, joined new colonists from Europe in order to forge their existence the wide open spaces of the Carolinas. These settlers of this brave new world are familiar with unfair taxation practices. Corruption already extinct today. Uh, I think basically a lot of these public officials in the back country realized they weren't being watched, and when people know they're not being watched, they were blind their pockets. A lot of the public officials were poorly supervised. The courthouse ring was formed up. <laughs> In the colony of North Carolina, before and during William Tryon's governorship, there is a noticeable rise of corruption within the administration. Many lawyers who are beholden to the new governor seem to operate with a wink and a nod from his office. These courthouse rings were breaking every English law in the history. And that was the point that the regulators kept making, that what they're doing is unconstitutional. What they're doing is unconstitutional. Want to keep watching? No, it's a very good because we have... No? There are too many layers, okay? That's one thing that's wrong with it. So it's for no reason they've layered, they've got, uh, you know, they've changed, the, they've put layers on it for no reason. And it, it makes me, well, it makes me difficult to focus on what they are saying. Yeah, so you're not focusing. So, you know, um, there's, if you don't, if you, you have to do everything for a reason in your edit. Don't do things just because you think it's cool, uh, because that's not cool. What, what else was weird in, in, in that? Did you actually, were you actually able to concentrate on it or not? <laughs> yeah, there was, there was loads of different information. I mean, one of the things that I didn't like, you might not have noticed, was the uh, transitions. Now, the transition is, is, is the, um, when you go from one clip to another clip. And what they did is they put fades on it. Yeah. And that just, you just don't need to do that. Um, it just looks rubbish. Um, I'm sure there are loads of other things that are wrong with that. But 
let's just think about what makes, what makes a good edit. After you've watched those two bad edits, obviously a good edit is kind of the opposite of that. What, what things make a good edit, do you think? Clearing the uh, direction through what you're saying, so the transitions and the content match the direction, and they, they clearly do in a story. Yes, a telling a story in a clear and simple way. Does, ever, does everyone know what, what, what this means? Can, I wonder if I can write on here. Nope. Um, does, it, does everyone know what KISS means? K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good thing to remember when you're doing anything, but especially when you're editing, keep it simple. Okay? Um, and you need a story, which means you need to start somewhere, have a middle, and have an end, and be concise, be clear. Um, what else about editing makes a good edit, a good cutting up of your story? Any ideas? Make it dynamic, not very slow transition. Yes, yes. If you don't need to have the train on the screen for half an hour, don't put the train on the screen for half an hour. You need to keep people's attention. That's true. Keep people's attention. Let's go through a few things. Do you know what the best, the, mo the main thing you need to remember when you're editing is to be invisible. That's the art form of editing. You don't want to see the edit. You, doesn't ha you don't want it to be obvious. It's, it's very clear when you cut from one shot to another shot, if you're watching, but if you're, if you're really watching for it, but if you're not, it just flows. There's nothing that must jar the ear or the eye in an edit. That's what makes a good edit. I've got a few um, um, things that I think makes a good edit here. So, as I said, be invisible. We talked about story already. The story comes first. And, and that means you have to kill your baby. Has anyone ever heard that phrase before? Killing your baby. What does it mean? It, uh, what? It is get rid of the stuff you don't need, but it's also get rid of the stuff that you really love but don't need. So if you spent like ages going up Snowdonia to get a beautiful sunrise and you don't need it in your story because there's no part in your story which has anything to do with the sunrise, get rid of it. Sorry, you wasted your time. Yes. Know your script, but don't be bound by it. So we've all got a script. We all based our shooting on the script. Now you've got the footage. You need to know what the footage uh, is meant to do. But if it doesn't do that, don't worry too much. You're bound <coughs> mainly by the footage. So the footage is going to tell your story, but you need to know what it's supposed to say. Yeah? Um, and make it, make it flow. That's part of being invisible. So some people think that, you know, when you've got the two shots together, you put a transition on and it fades together and that makes it flow. No, it doesn't. It makes the edit more obvious. So don't put these... I'm really against these transition f kind of fades over shots because it means that you haven't done your, your work properly as an editor. If the cut between two shots doesn't work, there's a reason for that. Something jarring your eye, you need to fix that. You need to fix the point where the cut is, rather than put a fade over it. But when it comes to sound, you do use fades, because the sound is supposed to sound like one continuous stream. Okay? You can't have anything that jars your ears, and if you cut between two different soundscapes, uh, there's an outside scene and an inside scene, that is a, um, that's, a, that's something that jars, so you do put transitions over sound, okay? We already talked about keeping it engaging, um, but we want the content to be engaging, not the editing, okay? So you don't need to do lots of flashy cuts and, and stuff like that to tell your story. You just tell your story. Um, simple, titles need to be simple. Um, you don't need to make it bright green with flowers all over it. Just plain white, it's fine. <laughs> this is all aesthetic stuff. You can disagree with me, that's fine. Um, now, just, I've just talked about the crossfades and the audio crossfades. And I say here, avoid still images. Um, a lot of you will use still images in your edit. But because this is the movies, we want them to move. So if you do have to use still images, we need to make them move. And that means adding some kind of animation to it. It's not complicated. They're called Ken Burns moves. Someone called Ken Burns invented them. And uh, basically, you just put a little bit of a zoom or a little bit of a pan on your, on your picture just to make it not sit there and be boring. So these are some of my ideas on how to do a good edit. 
But before we get to the edit, we've got everything else. Steps to success in post-production. Post-production um, is not just editing. What else does it include, do you think? Yeah, well, well, one of the things is to, is to take care of what you've already got, your footage. You need, to, you need to organize it, take care of it, put it somewhere, back it up. We're going to be doing that in a second. Not backing it up, but we're going to look at the organization that you need. Um, what other things are involved in post-production? So I think it's also so I've got soundtrack and I've got different devices and getting enough yeah. in, in time to being able to use it. Yeah. Um, finding things like your, your music and, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and um, also making sure that you've got all your credits sorted, all your permissions yeah. sorted. And if you're going to do it, you need a voiceover to put the voiceover. Yeah, sure. So um, recording a voiceover, you, when you've done your edit, like thinking, oh my goodness, I've missed out that ping pong ball. I'm going to go back and film the ping pong ball again because I just need another little shot. That's called a pickup. Pickups, that's yeah. part of post production. And also distribution, let's not forget distribution. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> is, a, is part, it is part, well, it's the next step after post-production. Right, so has everyone signed into their computer? I'm assuming you have. What we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be, we're going to be organized. So organization is the, is the main thing for success in post-production. You need to be organized. So what we recommend um, I'm going to just show, I'm just going to set up, we're going to set up a folder on our desktops. So if you just go to your desktops um, and if you go to desktops, we're going to create a folder on the desktops. Now this folder is a project folder. You can organize any way you want, but this is one way of organizing and really the main thing you don't want to do is have your footage all over the place. Um, your documents all over the place. You want everything together in a project um, folder. So create a new folder and call it the name of your project. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Skull <laughs> or something like that. We're, we're actually going to do this. We're actually setting up these folders now. So where you put this project folder is also important. We're putting it on the desktop um, and we're going to put all of our footage in. Well, we're not really because... Um, that's just going to take toll. I couldn't put all the footage on the desktops because I couldn't access your desktop, so uh, we're going to pretend. But footage takes up a lot of space. Um, so bef if you're going to do a lot of shooting, you need to think before you start, where am I going to put my footage? Not on your desktop, hopefully, unless you're just one project. Um, you need a place, a dedicated place, to store your footage and you need to be able to back it up. So it's not just one copy but two copies. In this case, because we're using ReVideo, we have a hard copy on our computer. We also have it online. So I think that kind of counts as a backup. But if you don't back up your footage, something like this happens, should I say. <laughs> in the, one of the departments in our university in Aberystwyth, <laughs> there was a lot of footage, about 10 terabytes of footage on a RAID on a NAS raid. Uh, the raid failed. What happened to all the footage? Gone. Gone. Years worth of footage. On a raid, on a tower, a raid tower. Yeah, so if you lose your footage, it's gone forever, and all the work that you put in to getting that footage is gone forever as well. You can't reshoot some things, you just can't. And it might not seem important to you now, but it will be when you lose it. <laughs> um, and, you know, we talked about not deleting files while you're shooting. It's the same thing. Don't delete when you're shooting and don't delete when you've got your footage either. You might want to archive your footage. Well, take it off your computer and put it onto an, a separate hard drive and have a, still have a backup, two copies. Okay? Right, so we've set up a project folder on our computer. Inside that folder, we're going to have a few other folders. We're having a footage folder, an other elements folder, an outputs folder, and a production documents folder. So if you can all see this clearly, can you set up those folders inside your project folder?
Sorry. <laughs> It was uh, Carol, Genevieve, and John. Okay, yeah, You've said Cool. Yeah. If you're using um, another editing software like Premiere or Final Cut, Final Cut's a bit different these days, but um, I'd also recommend you have a Premiere folder in here if you're using Premiere. Um, and that's where you'd store your project file and all the other files that the uh, editing software creates. So this is just a way of keeping everything together. It's an example of being organized. You don't have to follow this, but Keep it in mind that you need to be organized. Right. So, has everyone done that? Yeah. Footage. Your footage goes in the footage folder. <laughs> so what I would do is when you've decided where to store all your footage, you put your footage in project folders on that, on that drive. Yeah. Um, so your footage goes in there, and I'm going to tell you how to store your footage in a minute. Other elements, what's that for? Any idea? Music. Yeah, it's things like music. Okay. Any? Sorry? Text. No, not not text. Not. No. Um, your any photos you want to use, any logos you want to use, any other media that's going to go into your into your edits. Okay. Um, <coughs> outputs. That's for your edits. So when you've finished editing, you're going to export um, a media file, a video file. So all the cuts that you do in your editing software will be, cre will be put together into one video file and you put them in there. And, you know, actually when you're editing, especially if you've got a bigger project, you're going to have several versions. You should have several versions because, you know, maybe you want to show a rough cut to someone. Um, you know, maybe you've edited it and you share it and, and you go back and you change it later. Or maybe you're doing several different languages. Maybe just two, Welsh and English. Maybe Chinese. <laughs> Sometimes you need several languages. So there'll be more than one output. Um, production documents like the script that we did yesterday. Um, a release form, maybe. A uh, risk assessment, if you did one. <laughs> so before, you're, you know, before you go and shoot, doing a risk assessment sometimes helped. Uh, are you going to be giving us handouts of your, what you're telling us now? Um, off, um, next week, on Monday, I hope, um, I'll put together um, a review and it will have all, I'll send you all the documents that we um, are using. Um, and all of our presentations as well. So it'll all be, all, all be sent to you in digital format, I don't worry. Right, I just want to tell you how, to, how I'd recommend you store your footage. Every time you go and shoot something, every shoot, which means you know, yesterday we did a shoot in the afternoon, we also did one in the morning, and there were two different shoots, weren't they? So every shoot should have its folder inside your footage folder. And um, let's do that now. Let's create a, a shoot, a folder for your shoot. <laughs> it gets a bit folder, 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 but it really helps to be organized like this. And this is how I label my, my um, shoot folders. I, I give it a date at the beginning. This is the Chinese way of dating. And it, it helps because the, the computer puts it in order then for you. <laughs> So 2015, uh, the uh, month and the day, and then if it's 2015, January, the 2nd of January, it'll be the one down. It just, it's just a way of ordering it, that's all. And then you call it what it was. What was, what was the shoot? Was it skull shoot? Was it um, grasslands field trip? Something like that. Get it? It's just the name of, of the shooting expedition, or whatever it is you shot, whatever it is you filmed.
So we're setting up these folders inside our, in our project folder. <coughs> now, if you only shot with one machine, with a camera, um, you don't need these extra folders. But if you had more than one machine, like if you were doing external sound, like some of you did yesterday, then you'll need, you'll need the folders for those different pieces of equipment so you don't get confused. Um, now, it's really important to do it like this, especially because cameras, audio recorders, you know, they number their files, but the Zoom, next day, will start at number one again, you know? It's if you've deleted all your files off, your, off the Zoom, and it will start at number one again, so you've got loads of audio one. How do you know what it is unless you've got it organized? Yeah? Um, so you, you, set, you set up folders for your different machines, and then what you do, once you've set up your folder and you're all nice and organized and ready, you connect your computer, you connect your, your camera or your audio recorder to your computer in whatever way you desire. I usually just take the SD card out and plug it in my computer because I got a slot. And what you need to do is, what I recommend is, you copy the entire folder structure, everything from the recording device into your folder that you've already set up. So if it was the Legria that we were using yesterday, the camera that we were using yesterday, they've got two folders, and inside the folder they've got millions of folders. I just go, ugh, copy everything, dump it in there. And this, it, this is a legacy thing, really, but it might be helpful in the future. The reason is that some editing programs still need some of the little tiny files that are associated to the media file to register it, to program it, to, um, to, to see it. Um, so if you, go, if you start in this way, copying the entire folder structure, you're not going to lose any of the little files that you might need. And in the future, when you move on to using red cameras, something like that, <laughs> if, you, if you go on into the future and you're using very complicated cameras, you won't, you won't mess up because you'll have everything. You've already got your workflow um, and the way that you work established, OK? So entire folder structure, copy to your footage folder, and then check. Make sure the folder on your camera and the folder on your computer is the same size. Because if it copies over and it's not the same size, then something has gone wrong and you've lost some footage. Check they're the same size. OK? And then play some of the video files on your computer. Do they play OK? Oh, everything's copied over OK. I can't tell you how many times. It sounds like an obvious thing to do. You've got to check that the copy has happened. How many times people don't check and it hasn't copied? And then you delete all the files on your camera and you've lost it. So just check that everything's copied over. And then you make your backup. You've got a backup, right? You've got, a little, you've got a little drive connected to your computer, copy it all onto the other drive. You've got two copies, you're nice and safe. Then you can delete everything on your camera. And every time you shoot, for every expedition to film something, go through this process and delete the files on your camera before you go out again. Okay? And the best way to delete them on your camera is to format the cards. If anyone wants us to show you how to do that on the Legrias, we will. You format the cards. Everything's wiped off. You've got a clean slate to go out shooting next time. But obviously, don't do that until you've got your footage backed up. OK? Does this all sound like obvious stuff? <laughs> no? Any questions so far? Yes? Um, formatting is quicker and it's cleaner. That's all. It just wipes everything and reprograms the card. But you can, you can just delete all the clips if you want. Yeah. yeah. I'm still going to do this if you're using, so I use Final Cut quite often. And yeah. That imports and builds a library. Using yeah. As well as the library. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate Final Cut's way of doing it because I'm an old school girl. I come from Final 7. Okay. And Final 10 use, does this stupid library and tries to organise it for me. I hate that. I want to organize it. But if you're used to Final Cut and you know how it does it, go with it. 
Just make sure you've got you've got your own backup of well, you yeah. need your own backup of the footage, an external backup. Okay. I fight Final Cut X all the way. <laughs> so, any other questions about this stuff? And does it make sense? Is it okay? Is it really simple? Or is it silly? Uh, I, I'm actually not very good with computers, so I've been struggling just to do the computer stuff. So, yeah. You know, hopefully, I can just catch up. It's all right. We'll get there. We'll, we'll help you if you um, if you need help. So if we uh, we don't format, uh, we just uh, do delete. Yeah, you can do that if you want, but you need to delete everything off the camera before you go out and shoot again. Because if you don't, then you'll have all the old footage, and you come back and you put all the old footage in another folder. It'd be confusing. Yeah. Um, the reason we say format is just because it's quicker and it's cleaner. And yeah. 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 <laughs> She's the computer expert. <laughs> That's true. Right. So, what I would want to do now is to get you all to start organizing all your footage and putting it in the folders we just set up. But we can't do that because I couldn't put any, anything on your desktops um, because I couldn't access them because only you have access to your desktop. So, what, you'd, what we'd what you should be doing now is putting all your footage in the folders, all your documents in the folders, getting nice and organized. Okay? Let's move on to a few technical things I want to talk about before you go and use WeVideo. There's very, 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 very few technical things you need to worry about with WeVideo. In fact, practically nothing. It's designed to uh, be super simple to use. But if you go on from WeVideo and you go into Final Cut or Premiere, or a more advanced editing software if you start to get into it, because editing is brilliant. It's wonderful fun. It really is. It's, it's, it's not just sitting in the dark room going, nah, 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 nah. It's, it's, you're building worlds in your head. It's wonderful. Um, if you do start doing that, you need to start understanding a few technical things about video. Because like every artist, an, uh, an editor is also a technician. You need to know how to use your tools and know what the materials are made of. But we're not going to go into that today because we're using WeVideo. Hooray! <laughs> Does everyone know what aspect ratio is? I did mention it a bit yesterday. Aspect ratio. What does it mean? Which against height, it's the whether it's long and thin or sort of square. Or yeah, something. it's the shape. Um, it's it's the shape of your picture. Um, we video actually just assumes that you know that, but not everyone does know that. Um, HD, high definition video, is normally 16 by 9. And this is the shape of 16 by 9 here. This, this rectangle. Okay? Nowadays, everything's in 16 by 9, unless you're watching an old version of uh, The Simpsons. <laughs> and that's going to be in the old format, which is 4 by 3, which is, much a, bit, is a bit squarer than 16 by 9. Now, this, this, this image here, within the frame, is not 16 by 9. It's a different size. That's because it's a photo. So it'll be 3 by 2, maybe. Um, I don't know what that aspect, that aspect ratio is. So what you've got here is these black spaces at the side. These are actually called pillar block boxes, if you're interested. <laughs> um, this is one thing that, aesthetically, you want to avoid. Black bars at the side or at the bottom. You don't want that. So what you'd have to do to this image is resize it. You'd make it, you'd make it bigger, which is OK, because this image is actually massive. It's just squished into this space. You'd make it bigger so you don't have the pillar boxes or the letter boxes, the black strips on either side, OK? Aesthetically, you want to fill the frame. And we'll talk a bit about how you do that in your video. The other thing that we video mentions and doesn't explain really is um, is the frame size. Um, in we video, you can full HD. This is not full HD. Full HD is 1080 by nine. No, wait a minute, 1920. <laughs> um, HD is high definition, and what that means is there are nine. Um, 1920 pixels along this way and 1080 pixels along this way a pixel is a dot it's the dot that makes up your picture 
And if you times this by this, that's how many pixels are in a high definition video image, how many little dots. And I forget how many it is, but I think it's about 3 million or something. Anyone correct me? <laughs> um, your footage yesterday was that much, was that big. It, it was HD. It was high definition. You'll bring it into WeVideo, and it won't let you export it as full HD. Um, that's just one of the things that WeVideo does at the moment. It might go on to full HD later, but it lets you export at 720, which is a kind of still considered high definition, but it's a smaller version. It's that much smaller. Does anyone know this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Geordie does. <laughs> with Kai, we were, we were filming uh, something about the tides with him um, a little while back, so I thought I'd use him. Um, and so he's, he's now 720. So that means there's 720 pixels going down this way and 1,280 going this way. So 720 is what you export, what you make your video file into in WeVideo. And it's also got P at the end. Um, and I just want to explain this stuff so that you know. P means progressive. <laughs> this is an editing thing. Progressive means it's a full frame. And it's just a bit different from I. Sometimes you'll see an I, and an I is interlaced. And that's a picture that's made up of two halves that are put together. So these days, everything is P. So if you see the P, you just go, oh, OK, good. It's, it's a full frame, and it's not interlaced. Interlaced looks rubbish. Go for P. Always go for P. That's all you need to know. <laughs> so 720p is what you export in WeVideo. Right, so that's um, some of the organization. That's some of the technical things. That is, just, that is just not even the tip of the iceberg. It's the, snow drop, snow drop on, the um, snowflake on top of the iceberg of technical things you would need to learn if you went into editing, like deep into editing. Like I, I do editing. I'm an editor, but there's so many technical things I don't know still. <laughs> I ask Matt to help, don't I, Matt? <laughs> But about the steps and the progress that you need to go through with editing, I'm quite good with that. So I just wanted to tell you what you should go through, um, the steps you should go through when you start editing. We've already, start, we've already set up our folders and do, dealt with our footage. What do you do when you're actually in the edit? Well, the first thing you need to do when you start out is to process your materials. And that means that you look at what you've got and you start working with it, that's all. What, what footage have you got? Um, I'm going to start working with it. It's a really good idea to start at the beginning just to sync your audio. Now, if you've done what you guys did with the... Actually, you've only got one audio file. Did you know that? Okay. okay. So you've got... Well, you can actually do that then. It's not going to be too time-consuming. You need to put your audio together with your video if you recorded onto a separate device. If you do that right at the beginning, then you're not going to have some confusing mess when you've already edited everything. You're like, where's the audio for that little cut that I did, for that edit that I did? If you do it right at the beginning, get rid of the rubbish audio, use the good audio, um, then you'll be OK. It's actually quite hard to do in Wii Video, and we're going to touch on it. Um, but we're not going to actually do it when, well, you can. It, it's, um, it is a bit time consuming, let's just say that. Do it at the beginning. <laughs> then you need to watch and log all your footage. What, just watch, get to know what you've got. You need to watch it all. It takes a long time. Editing does take a long time. And watching your footage is one of the things that takes long, longest. And do you know what log, logging the footage means? Um, well, to be honest, it just means writing down what's in it. Like, I, when I first started editing, I'd write everything down long, longhand, just so I got to know my, <laughs> just so I got to know my footage. I don't do that anymore. Um, I kind of just just watch it, and I've logged it in my head. I know where everything is. Um, but logging means just just kind of keeping a record of what's in the footage. And if you were doing it professionally, then you'd have a little assistant doing that and writing everything and putting it in <laughs> in um, folders and goodness knows what. Then what you do is you pick the good bits. What's the bits that I want to use? So you're watching all the footage, and maybe while you're doing it, you're going, oh, that's a good interview. I want that. I want that. You're selecting the good bits, and you're getting rid of the bad bits. 
And then you can start structuring your story based on your script, if possible. And what I do, because I'm quite verbal, some people don't do this, but I don't understand how they work otherwise, I start structuring my story using the verbal elements. So I use the interviews and the voiceover um, because most videos have that. If they didn't have that, I'd use the music, if it was a music video, you know. I'd use the verbal ele elements, right? So I want my story to be told in this way. This is where that interview is going to go. That's where the, the next interview is going to go. There's going to be some talking in the beginning. So it's kind of you start with the sound. That's what you're starting with. That's what I do. Um, and, you know, I often think that editing is um, a bit like sculpting. Um, you get a big piece of marble and uh, you, you're chipping away uh, until you reveal the beautiful statue underneath. <laughs> you could think of it that way. You could also think of it as building a match, a match, uh, matchstick structure, little bits putting together until you build a, the Menai, Menai Straits bridge. Um, so you need to start cutting, cutting bits away. So I've got the good bits, but I don't know what bit of that good bit I want. And as you go further through your edit, you're going to go, right, I just want that little qu quote. Take it out. Cut off. Cutting away, cutting away all the time. Yeah? Um, and then, when you've got an idea of your structure, you've got the bones of it, you can start building it up with the pretty pictures. And the pictures also tell a story. That's why we had that script at the beginning. Um, verbs, words on verbs. Words on one side and pictures on the other. The pictures and the words need to work together, just tell a story together, okay? They don't want to repeat each other, they need to just work, they need to work together. So you build it up by adding, adding uh, pictures. And something I like to do is to save my work in stages. You can do that in Wii Video. It's quite hard because it's designed to do very simple edits. Um, in Wii Video, what you, what, what you need to do is um, create a new video if you're going to work in stages. And working in stages means, OK, I've got a kind of a rough idea of what I want. And now I want to go and refine it. So I'm going to save a new, I'm going to start a new video. You can duplicate your video and keep working on the next one, if you see what I mean. You can work in that way if, if necessary, um, if you've got something long. Um, any questions so far? What would you define as long? Um, <sighs> not a long video, but a lot of footage. So if I was going to do um, something that was slightly more complicated with several layers um, and a lot of footage, like I'll show you a video later, and I'll, say, I'll tell you how that, that's complicated. It look, took a long time, a long edit. Um, I don't know, the same, the same way you say multiple versions of a Word document. Yeah. You know, as you progress down the Word document, it gets really long. You kind of want to say versions of it, wouldn't you? Because you want to do some drastic changes. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is it's a, bit like, it's a bit like that. Um, right, that's at the beginning of your edit. Now you're in the middle of your edit. And what you need to do is start to make your story flow. So you've got the bits that you want, and now it needs to, needs to flow and not look unnatural. So one of the things you have to do, and we're going to hopefully teach you to do this, is to cover up your cuts. So you've got someone talk. Maybe you've just got one interview, and you cut it up. OK? You need to cover up that cut with a, another piece of footage. So what you don't want is a jump cut. Does anyone know what a jump cut is? So I've got one, one interview, person sitting in the same place, and I only want that beginning bit and that end bit, and I want to put them together. It will sound like one quote, but it won't look like one quote, because what you'll get is a jump in the picture. So that's when the edit point is very, very obvious, and that's, that's going to jar your eye. You want to avoid it. And one way, you, the, the only way, really, to avoid it is to cover it up with another piece of footage, which is why you get B-roll, yeah? Which is why you get extra footage. Like, so we've got the skull. We've got the skull man talking about his skull. And then we've got the actual close-up of the skull that you can cover up any edit points, yeah? So cover up your cuts. Tidy and tight, tighten, make it, make it shorter, as short as possible. Um, we've already talked about filming pickups to fill in the gaps. 
you've got your story now, really. And it's like, oh my goodness, I really need just one extra shot to tell that story perfectly. Go and film it. And this is the stage that you would do your voiceover. Um, the whole time you're editing, if you wanted a voiceover, you've got in your head, I want a voiceover for this. You're editing and you're composing your voiceover the whole way through. And this is where you write it out properly and record it and stick it in. That's why we didn't do voiceovers yesterday, because we hadn't done an edit. Okay? And you need to, an editor always watches the edit over and over and over again. Small bits, big bits. I want the big structure, I want the small, ed I want the small cut to all work. And um, you re-edit a lot. Okay, so that's in the middle, you're making it flow. Next bit is the end when you uh, just make sure that everything, uh, you just add the finishing touches. Um, Get, getting feedback. Most people are, are bad with feedback. <laughs> I am. But if you're, if you're doing it for someone else, like the head of your department, then you need to get their feedback, right? And if they say, yay, just go ahead, then yay, you don't have to re-edit. But sometimes you have to re-edit. Um, fix any problems with sound and picture. Um, one problem in sound might be a banging door. You can get rid of that by replacing it with another piece of audio. You need to do that, because the banging door is going to disturb you. That's, that's going to jar your ear. If the picture is a bit wonky, you can fix that. Can we fix that in wee video? I'm not sure if you can do it in wee video. <laughs> but you can. OK, so maybe you need to change the, maybe you need to fix the picture a little bit, make it ne less wonky. Um, maybe it's all blue, your picture. So you need to make it not blue. Remember how we talked about the white balance yesterday? If it's all blue, someone's going to notice. You need to change that. And you're adding transitions. Now, you know I said I don't like fades between shots. So if you've got a, if you've got a jump cut, you have to cover it up with footage. Don't cover it up with a fade. Where would you add a fade on a, on a picture? Before you start. Yeah, yeah. No. What you'd do is you'd, you'd do a fade in at the beginning. Yes? And you'd do fades on your titles. So you'd do a fade in from black at the beginning, and then otherwise it starts too abruptly, and you go, oh, whoa, the, f the picture's just started without any kind of nice um, fade in. And at the end, you'd go fade, in, fade out to black. That's, the only, that's why you've got a fade transition in your editing software, because you need to fade in from black and fade out to black. And you also put a fade in on your titles, OK? Then they don't come in abruptly. This is also the stage that you add your titles and, and maybe your music. Sometimes you can start right at the beginning with music. Sometimes you do it right at the end. It depends how you want to work. If you do want to use music, just bear in mind that it adds about two days to your, to your um, workflow. It, it takes a lot of time. Why? You have to find it. You have to find the right thing. Don't just find some stupid Chinese, good Chinese punk. No, it wasn't even good Chinese punk. <laughs> Don't find a piece of rubbish music and just think it's going to work because you like it. It has to work for the story. It has to work in the edit. And that takes a long time. It especially takes a long time when you're trying to find free music. Uh, and then you have to actually make it work within the edit, so you have to edit the music as well. It just takes a long time. The titles don't take a long time. And we'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then I say here, mix the audio. It's something you can do in Wii Video. Mixing the audio means just making sure that you can hear everything. The music isn't too loud, uh, and, and you can hear the voice. The voice is loud enough. That's what mixing means. It means putting everything together so that it all sounds right, putting all the sound elements together so it all sounds right. And if you're really into it, you can add sound effects as well. You can add in a banging door if you want. <laughs> there are places you can find free sound effects as well. Um, so those are the stages of, of editing, the things you need to do to get to the end. And then what happens at the end? Can I just highlight something as well? Yeah. Can I make sure you say as well, it's probably just crashed on. I almost lost it, lost everything but auto save. So save, save, save. Yep. <laughs> on WeVideo, you don't have to save because WeVideo does it automatically for you. But if you're not using WeVideo. If you're not using WeVideo, saving things is a good idea. <laughs> and when you're, using, when you're using Word as well. <laughs> It doesn't do 
with that on, but it does do it. But it does also automatically open previous projects and from the last one. So it does You can't see my pretty picture. But, yeah, I'll avoid it for a second. <laughs> But so, um, so when you've done all your editing, you need to export. Um, in uh, Wii Video, it's called finishing. Um, basically, just means creating a file, a video file. Um, is it the end? No, it's just the beginning. <laughs> you need to distribute then, and distribution could take up a whole workshop. Um, we are not going to be able to talk much about it, but you need to think about that right at the beginning. Where am I sending my video when it's done? Where could you send it? Media server. Can we have here? You could put it on your media server. Cadon portal. You could put it on Cadon. Yes, <laughs> so I get brownie points. You do. <laughs> you get a brownie. YouTube. YouTube. Facebook. Yes. Um, can you just put? Yeah, I guess you can, can't you? Yes. Wonderful wee video. Um, Vimeo is another platform. There are loads of platforms out there. Um, once you've got it on a platform, you can share that link in whatever way you think fit. Think fit. But you know, taking care of your video and making sure you don't waste your time, you haven't wasted all the time you've put into making this video, this is distribution. Keep working the video, make it work for you. Share it with your students next year. Um, you know, maybe you've got some, a, a, a group that you, you know, just tell everyone about it. Yeah, it takes, it takes how, long is a, how, lo how long does distribution take, people ask me. How long is a piece of string? It's as long as you want to keep the video alive. That's how long distribution takes. Have we done, have we done? Ah, oh, yeah, credits. We'll talk about credits. In a minute. Let's see what the time is. It's, it's 10.30. I'm completely on time. Oh, yeah. Yay, look at me. <laughs> okay, so are there any questions with what I've just gone through? I did a lot of talking. You don't have to take it all in, but it's about process. I just talked to you about workflow, how you do it from beginning to end. Will, will we have access to these PowerPoints? Yes, so you will. Your yeah, topic. for sure. Are you really keen now to get going on WeVideo? Are you ready? Let's do it. Right.